Okay, so let's take a look at question number five, okay? It says identify the holes in the graph of this equation, then graph. And we already did this in class, but the first thing you have to do is factor. Now, but let's try and an, um, answer the question first. It says identify the holes. So basically, you only have to figure out what the vertical asymptote is. So I already highlighted x plus 5. And if you set that equal to 0, then you have to subtract 5 from both sides, and you'll be left with x equals negative 5. That's your vertical asymptote, and so this is going to be where the hole is. So that's the answer. The next thing we have to do is graph this, right? And so we already talked about graphing. But look, in order for us to graph this, we got to factor, okay? So let's factor the top part. 2 times negative 15 is negative 30, and then 7 goes at the bottom. So it was 10 times negative 3, wasn't it? That became negative 30, and when you add them together, you have 7. Our leading coefficient is 2, so you put 2 on top, 10 at the bottom, 2 on top, negative 3 at the bottom. We simplify, and then we put the x next to each other. So we know that the top is going to be x plus 5 and 2x minus 3. Okay, and then of course our denominator is x plus 5, which is going to get cancelled out. So what are we really graphing? Yes, let me erase all of this. We are basically graphing the graph of 2x minus 3. So how do you graph it? 1, 2, 3, go down by 3. Okay, that's where you start. And your slope is 2 over 1. So you go up by 2 and to the right by 1. 1, 2, to the right 1. And then you keep doing that. Up 2 to the right 1, up 2 to the right 1, okay? Then you just connect it, okay? Now here's the interesting part, right? Even if you were to graph this on Desmos, the graph wouldn't be correct because we have to identify the whole even in our graph, okay? So important thing, make sure you identify this as negative 3. And whatever this, you know, y-intercept is, if you put it on decimals and you click on that button, it will tell you what number it is. But we already know because y is equal to 0 that this point is going to be at 1.5. Finally, we need to make the whole. The whole is that x is equal to negative 5, so find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Find out where negative 5 is. And then go ahead and draw a dotted line, okay? Because that's your vertical asymptote. And make sure that right there, you draw a big hole because that's where the hole is supposed to be, okay? And so that's all you have to do, okay? And don't forget to write the vertical asymptote, x equals negative 5, okay? And so that's it for number 5. Easy question. Number 6 was a little bit difficult, wasn't it? First, we're going to have to compare the equation of g of x with the equation of f of x, we're describing the transformation first, okay? And then we gotta talk about the domain and the range, and we gotta graph it. So this question, um, graphing is going to be really important, right? So let's first talk about, talk about the transformation. We already know everything because we have our notes, right? So the negative two means g of x moved down by two units is a translation down. And you have to write it exactly like this, okay? So that means, basically, if I understand that you said g of x moved down by 2 or something like that, I'm good, okay? Translation down by 2 units. And then the next thing is the plus 5 over here. So we know that because it's a plus 5, we're going to the left by 5 units, right? So g of x is a translation to the left by 5 units. And then let's take a look at the 4. That's the horizontal stretch. That means we're pulling it sideways, right? Okay, so there you go. G of x is a horizontal stretch. By a factor of 4. And then finally, we have to take a look at the 3, which is a vertical stretch. That means you're pulling the graph up and down. So the whole graph will get skinnier and taller, right? So g of x is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3.
Okay, so that's just a transformation. Now we're going to talk about the domain and range, but in order to talk about the domain and range, we're going to first graph it. And I told you the best way is to go into Desmos, right? And so we talked about this in class, so it's really important that you punch the correct graph, I mean, the correct buttons, right? So I'm just going to get rid of this. So just start off with the 3, okay? And then the square root is this button right here, okay? Let's not get confused. And then you click on 1, and for the fraction bar, you click on the division symbol, and then 4. Then you click on the arrow button to the right just once. And then open up your parentheses, x plus 5, close your parentheses, and because the minus 2 has to be outside of the square root, you press the arrow button one time, the right side arrow button one time again, and then you put minus 2. And bam, now here's your graph. I told you you gotta give me this point, this point, and this point. And this point, it won't just stay. You gotta click on it and just look at it, right? Okay, so that's negative 5, comma 2. So make sure you draw all that for me. And so because you can see this graph, now you know that the graph starts over here. Okay, so over here, this is at negative 5. And the graph starts basically over here to the right. So your domain is equal to or greater than negative 5. And... If you want to look at the range, that's the y values. Basically, you can see this is at negative 2, and at the bottom there's no graph, but on top there is. So y is equal to or greater than negative 2 is your range. So it's really cool when you can see the graph yourself, right? So make sure you draw that graph because it says graph over here. And we have to talk about the domain. So the domain was, I'm going to define it as x, and x is equal to or greater than negative 5. And our range we're going to define it as y, and y is equal to or greater than negative 2. And we are done. I wish you do well on the test, okay? Goodbye.